¿Le han sacado sangre o algo? No, nada, nada. No, sí, no. Venga, vamos a poner una vía, vamos a sacar sangre, le vamos a poner de fluidos, hemograma de bioquímica del 10 y vamos a... Esto va a ser... Qué hijos de puta. Esto va a ser una plomada. Esto, es? esto van a ser perdigonadas. Me han disparado por todas partes. Y es que igual tiene perdigones en puta. Qué hijos de puta. Tiene pinta de, de que era disparado, no lo sé, pero... It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. Hello. I'm going to tell you an extraordinary story. Please, listen to this. Truly, it's something that I'm sure you could never have imagined. Those of you who are familiar with this organization, and I know that many of you know us very well, know what we do. We rescue injured animals, sick animals, animals in critical condition, often as a result of abandonment, mistreatment, or natural diseases, chronic illnesses like leishmaniasis. We rescue animals that have been run over, animals that have been abandoned in houses and left there locked up. Muchos perros, galgos y podencos. And we rescue many animals, many dogs, greyhounds and other hunting dogs, animals that began their days as part of a hunting pack and who end their days, or well, almost end their days, abandoned in fields and on roads, animals that have been shot at, animals that have received gunshot wounds, broken legs, animals that have become quadriplegic. Well, what can I say? follow our channel, follow our daily videos. Today I'm going to tell you a story that is very possible some of you know, but when it happened four years ago, this channel was much smaller, so it's possible it was missed by some, simply because time has passed. But I'm going to tell it to you again, I'm going to summarize it for you. Four years ago, it was a day in May, I was at home at the end of May, when suddenly at eight in the morning, there's a knock on the door, and there are two gentlemen at the door. I went to see what was happening, and they were two policemen. They asked me to please go with them to the police station. They needed to talk to me. Honestly, the first thing I thought was that one of my dogs had escaped, that something had happened with a dog from the White House we had back then. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't know what could be happening. They took me to the police station and explained what had happened. There were indications of criminality on my part, and I was accused of continuous fraud. I was dumbfounded. I didn't understand what was happening. With time, I understood. A few days went by until we became aware of what was happening. What happened is that one of the neighbors of the White House, where we had eight animals, started to complain about the noise. She heard barking, didn't know why there were animals there, and called the local police to tell them that there was an illegal animal breeding operation in that house. Dogs. The police showed up, arrived at the house, and obviously, far from finding an illegal breeding operation, they found a house with five or six dogs in wheelchairs. Another five or six dogs with three legs. You know, the animals we have. I don't know which animals we had at that time. I imagine Dickens, Nancy, Jordan would have been there, the long-term residents, and some more that were later adopted. Well, finally the police did an inspection of the house. They found everything very good. They were very satisfied. They called me, I went, showed them around. Great. A couple of days later, the same lady called again to say that there was something odd going on. So the police came again, I showed them everything again. They were once again very satisfied. I explained to them that we are an animal rescue organization based in the Netherlands and that there is the Spanish branch, so to speak, where we had the resident animals until they were adopted. What happened then is that one of the policemen found it odd, such a strange thing the White House. This name is very strange. 
Spanish shelters are not like this. In this country, dogs do not live in mansions. Shelters here keep dogs in kennels. They have conditions that, whether better or worse, are not those found in this house. The dogs in this house have a swimming pool, such a strange thing. So, the police officer decided to follow me. He followed my car. Where does this guy live? He arrived at my house's gate and found what you see here behind me. My house's garden, a beautiful garden. The truth is that it's amazing. Turns out that in this country, you can't have a garden like this without it being suspicious, without it being an indication of a crime. And that's where an investigation began. For about two years, I think it was two years, the police followed me. They monitored me. They tapped my phone. I think they thought, well, we have an impressive case here, a criminal network. They followed me for a long time. I know they followed me when I went to the airport to take animals to Germany. At that time, I often went, sometimes once a month, twice a month. I always took a couple or three dogs. And well, I guess he goes to Germany. Ooh, sometimes we went to Switzerland. Of course, to go to Germany from Valencia, you have to take a Swiss flight. So, I flew to Zurich. Of course, what is this guy doing? Surely he's going to Switzerland. He must be carrying millions in his suitcase. Well, the situation continued for several years until the judge, I guess tired of seeing that this investigation was leading nowhere, asked the police what was being done with the investigation. And they decided to enter my house and conduct a search. Normally, when a search is conducted on a criminal, several agents show up and they turn the house upside down. And that's precisely what happened in my house. And they showed up, I don't know, 11, 12 agents with the canine brigade, dogs, trackers, looking for money, looking for computer equipment, and well, the things that are normally searched for in houses where there are indications of criminality, especially cash and things like that. I was very cooperative from the beginning because, well, what was I going to do? Besides, I had no problem with them looking wherever they wanted because there was nothing here. They searched everything. It was incredible. My father had just passed away those days and they even looked through my father's wallet. A thorough search. The police found 36 euros in my house. 36 euros. Really. It's not a made-up figure. There were 36 euros in the house. Of course, there was no cash, no money. This fraudster, what is he doing? How is he doing it? Where is the money he is embezzling? Such a strange thing. They took me to the police station and I was arrested. I spent two nights in a cell. Two nights. Truthfully, they were two terrible days. Something I wouldn't wish on anyone. Especially knowing that you've done nothing wrong. My biggest concern, I'll be honest, was that I had to pick up my kids from school that afternoon and there was no way to tell them I wasn't going to come. During those two days, a lot of things go through your head and you wonder, what is this? How have we reached this point? What has happened here? There were 36 euros in my house. When I was released from the police station after two days, with the obligation to report every 15 days to the station to sign, they took my passport. They took my car, of course. They took my computer and my phone. Well, I went back home and now, how does it work? I don't have a car. How can I transport dogs? How do I move around? My passport. They also took it. Man, I have two kids. I remember they might have thought that maybe I was going to flee. But how was I going to flee? If I have a ton of things set up here, and especially, especially, I have two small children to whom it made no sense. What was I going to do? Where was I going to go? Well, as they started to look at all my papers and interviewed the people around me, they realized that there was nothing there they realized it had been a monumental screw-up. 
And when you read the report of everything, well, you realize the police didn't know Let's Adopt existed. They had the impression that donations came to me, to my personal account, and that I was spending the money, I don't know, on parties, on, well, I don't know. The police never knew that there was an organization, Let's Adopt International, which is the one donors, those of you watching this video and donating, donaritu. And it's the organization that pays all the bills, and pays the bills well. The truth is that, at that time, we had an average of 25, 30, 35,000 euros per month in veterinary expenses at various veterinarians. Everything was obviously paid from the organization's accounts. The police looked at my account, started looking into it and said, well, this guy raises money, doesn't pay bills, because obviously I don't pay veterinary bills. The organization does, of course. So everything was very strange. It was, they didn't understand anything. They didn't understand what was happening. They conducted interviews at the Valencia Sur Veterinary Hospital. In many videos, I have always said that we operated our animals at Valencia Sur. The police understood that I personally operated on the animals. They accused me of acting under false pretenses, of operating on the animals myself. Obviously, they went to the hospital and were put in their place. They were told, gentlemen, here, only three surgeons from the hospital operate. How is this man going to operate who doesn't know the difference between a potato and a heart? Well, I do know the difference, but it's so you get the idea. I'm not going to operate on animals. Why would I operate on animals myself? If we have some of the best surgeons in Spain, why would I operate when Jorge or Isidore or any of the many veterinarians we have worked with can operate. Well, I continued to go regularly to sign. This lasted for months, for years. In this country, justice is very slow. I don't know why it's so slow, but it's very slow. And the years went by, well, without a car, well, I gave up on things. I mean, I thought that someday they would return them to me. It all progressed very slowly. The truth is that I don't know why justice in Spain is so slow. And finally, on January 31st, 2023, almost two and a half years after the events of my arrest, the prosecutor writes a document in which she requests the court to dismiss the case. For a series of reasons, especially because there is no evidence of anything, because the investigation has not reached any conclusion. There is nothing and, in the words of the prosecutor, in our opinion, we do not have sufficient evidence to override the presumption of innocence. What does this mean? That the prosecutor does not show up, that the prosecutor asks the judge not to proceed further, because there is nothing. And what happens then? Then, enter. I don't even know how to present these gentlemen who come now. I will try to do it very elegantly. And I will explain why I will do it very elegantly. Because if you get into the mud to fight with pigs, you end up very dirty. And I'm not going to go there. A hunter's foundation. I will not name the name, which you can find out there. But if I name them, I'm giving them publicity. Good or bad, but it's publicity. And in the end, that's what they want. So I'm not going to go there. A hunter's association, a foundation, presented itself as private prosecutors. This is allowed in the Spanish legal system. So suddenly a group of gentlemen, I believe they are in Ciudad Real, decide to present themselves as a private prosecution against me. When the Crown Prosecutor herself has said there is no case. And why do they do this? Why does the Hunters Association do this? Ah, because it's a Hunters Association for the protection of hunting interests. And what do I have to do with hunting if I have never messed with hunters? Ah, wait, of course. But if we rescue a lot of greyhounds, of course. Of course, Julian was shot in the leg. Of course, this other one 
appeared thrown away with both legs broken, they appear run over a lot, of course, and they are podenkos, of course. And then there are the dogs we rescue from the dark enclosures that are home to hunters' dogs. Ah, of course, of course. It was logical. It was logical that a small hunter's foundation would attack, who at that time, even now I believe, we continue to be the largest animal rescue channel in our country. Of course, of course. It made all the sense in the world. They had to go after me. Of course, they did. So they presented themselves as a private prosecution. And even though initially our lawyer, of course, requested the dismissal of the case, they said no, that as private prosecutors, they will go ahead. We requested that our car be returned to us, which had already been two and a half years in a compound. Initially, they refused, but we wrote to them again, and they returned the car. They returned the car. And we also requested that my computer and my phone be returned to me, because by then it was an iPhone 9, I think. It's an old phone. It's useless, but it's my phone. And my computer, I also needed it. They decided not to. The hunters opposed the return of my phone and computer, and I asked for my passport back. I've been almost four years now without being able to leave the country. And you all have seen my videos rescuing animals internationally and taking animals to their homes. Then, apart, I'll be honest with you, I would like to travel with my kids. I haven't been able to do it in the last four years, and I'll tell you the truth. That's what has hurt me the most about all this that they've had me here having to completely change the way we work. Well, because yes, okay, fine. Finally, yesterday, they precisely returned my passport, four years later. Okay, great, very good. And I wouldn't have said anything because, as I've told you, I don't want to roll in the mud with these people. The truth is that I don't want to accuse or speak ill of them, because it's not even necessary. It's not my style. First, you have seen me here that we usually rescue, solve cases. The animal rehabilitates, goes to its homes, and we don't mess with anyone. We do our job very, very well, and we don't get into controversies. But in this case, the controversy came to me. They went straight for my neck. An amazing thing. Well, precisely yesterday, an announcement appears in a couple of media that the trial will be held, obviously, on April 11th, in which a judge puts me on the stand and so on for alleged fraud. Here we go again. But if there is no public prosecutor, if there is no evidence of anything, if there is nothing, if as much as they searched, there was never anything. Do you see what we do? We have been doing everything with incredible transparency for years. You know how each animal evolves. They even claimed that the animals we rescued didn't exist. That they were photoshopped. That they were animals that had died a long time ago. That they weren't even ours. And well, during these years, I haven't said anything about it. Why am I going to roll in the pigsty? with pigs. I didn't want to do it, but yesterday, after that announcement, they made in the press and different articles that were published. The truth is that I did want to say something. And I'm going to do it without mentioning the names of the people who are leading this forward. What I am going to do is to take some photos of these people from the internet. I'm going to show you a photo of the lawyer of the organization that presents itself as a private prosecution. I want you to see his face. I think we're going to cover his eyes. Not for anything. But why? Why am I going to give him more publicity? But I want you to see it. Do you see that child? What do you think? What can be expected from a person like that, who takes a five-year-old child, four years old, that child must be on a boar hunt. These are the hunters. Yesterday they made a statement in which they said the following, and I'm going to read it to you, because yesterday I put it in a post on the page, but I think it's necessary. It says, the hunting foundation will continue to fight against him and anyone else who benefits personally from social solidarity. 
especially when they are tarnishing a group of people, hunters, who are constantly showing their commitment to fight against the abandonment and mistreatment of animals. They actually say that, that hunters constantly show a commitment against the abandonment and mistreatment of animals. Let's see. And if this video is being watched by someone who has nothing to do with the animal sector, it is possible that they say, what a strange thing. But how can hunters kill animals? How can they have a commitment against abandonment and mistreatment of animals? Are they not killing them? What greater mistreatment than that? You can say, okay, hunting as it is a hunting activity from time immemorial and we go hunting. But please, and what they do with their dogs, not all, of course, not all hunters are bad people. I have never said that here. If one of my greatest childhood friends is a hunter, if I know hunters, and many are very good people, really. They have different ideas than yours, but, well, then you try to understand. They were raised like that, and their parents taught them to hunt. Many times they had no choice at all. They were born into a family of hunters. And if you are born into a Democrat family or a Republican family, well, normally people then continue the family tradition. We never mess with that. Hunters constantly show a commitment against abandonment and mistreatment of animals. Please, ask any shelter in Spain, where do the greyhounds we have come from? Ask Scooby in Ciudad Real or ask any organization in Seville, ask the Benjamin Menher Foundation, where do the greyhounds they are collecting daily by the dozens come from? Who do those greyhounds escape from? Where do they come from? Who abandons them? Who abandons them? We have never gone to attack sectors because it's also useless. If I'm trying to get support for a greyhound that has been hanged or shot, the only thing... I don't want more hunter stories and start discussions about whether it was a hunter or not a hunter. Actually, the one who did it was a lawyer or had a candy store. What does it matter? But we all know where those animals come from. All of us who live in Spanish cities, where there is a number of hunters, hunting grounds, know what happens. And it's not necessary for me to enter into more controversies, really. The trial will be on April 11th without a public prosecutor. Because, well, as they wrote it themselves, there is no evidence, there are no indications of a crime. It's just that, with what there is, the presumption of innocence cannot be overcome. And in this country, although sometimes it doesn't seem like it, we are innocent until proven guilty. And it shouldn't be us who prove our innocence, but the others who prove the guilt of the accused. So that's not the case. And in the end, everything gets mixed up and you have to give a lot of explanations that we have gladly given. We have done it both at the court level and here through videos. And anyone who has contacted me during these years has been explained. When this happened, as I tell you, almost four years ago, it was a small media scandal. Many pages published the news. It began to spread. People passed it on to each other. I had to hear real insults. Some horrible things. But you know what? This organization lost two donors. Two donors. Two donors of 10 euros. Over time, there were people who read the news. And there have even been animal rights organizations that also to try to take advantage and to try to have relevance there made videos about us. There's a lady out there in the north, a strange lady, who also made a video putting us in a very bad light. Many tried there to attack us and such. But you know what? The organization has not been affected at all, on the contrary. All of you who know us 
know what we do. There are hundreds of families in Spain who have our animals, and many also abroad. You all have seen me travel, have tremendous ordeals, and since I don't have a passport, you are seeing my brother going to take the animals to their homes. What are you going to tell those people who have seen how we have gone out of our way for them and their animals? What's wrong? What are you coming with accusations that I am a mega fraudster? Please. But well, this is how it is. On April 11th, I will have to see the face of this gentleman from the Hunters Association. And the truth is that, well, I don't know what to tell you. I would ask him why he went after me. What have we done to make them look bad? But we haven't gone, man. The reason why hunters have a bad reputation is because you behave badly. It's because not only what you do, but how you do it. It's very difficult for society to accept you. Because you do terrible things. Some of you are good and some are bad. I don't know. I don't know what percentage of you are good or bad. But those packs of greyhounds, overwhelmingly horrible. Every time you see a hunter on the road going with those carts there, those trailers behind, full of dogs, suffocated in summer. And you blame me, but if you just have to see yourselves, it's terrible. Then I could even give advice on how to make society accept you. I don't know, behave differently, communicate differently, get up to date get up to date, to evolve in the same direction as society. Instead of going backward, well, go forward. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to give you advice because I would have to charge you, and that's not the way we axed. Anyway, April 11th. Then, I will have to see the hunters who, well, there will be no public prosecutor. It will be them accusing me of things I haven't done. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not going to be the one to make a prediction about how the case will go. When in a case there is no public prosecutor, well, obviously, what do you want me to tell you? That's how it is. But well, now you know. I never said it before. I kept quiet because I didn't want to talk about this. But it has been the hunters. Not all hunters, but a foundation for the defense of hunting interests. So the next time an animal rights activist writes to me to insult me or such, well, remember whose side they are on. Remember who has engineered all this. Anyway, what can I tell you? Four years enduring this, but now I have my passport. See. So as soon as I can, I'll go on vacation with my kids, out there. I'll go out, I don't know. Maybe I'll take them to London to see, I don't know. But I'm going to travel with them. They deserve it. They're already eight years old, and it's been a long time since they left Spain. Four years without a passport. Two and a half, or almost three years with the car parked in a compound. And having to endure widespread slander. Anyway, now you know. The hunters. Now think for yourselves and judge for yourselves. Greetings. I leave you because I have to prepare the rescue of a kitten. You will see it tomorrow on the page. Don't miss it. It's a kitten with terrible neck wound problems. We're going to continue doing what we do every day. If this is not going to change, it hasn't changed in four years. Well now, well I don't know. This is what hunters do, the same ones who lobbied, made lobby so that greyhounds and working dogs are not included in the animal protection law. Of course, I mean, as if they weren't mistreated enough, now it can be done completely with impunity. Anyway, this is our daily battle. 
a very strong greeting and really to that lawyer of the hunters. What would I tell you? I think maybe we even talk at the exit of the trial, not before, because I don't feel like it. But at the exit, maybe we even talk and you'll realize you went after the wrong person. It wasn't me. No, no era yo. No era yo. The problems of hunting are not in people like me. They start with you yourselves. And you yourselves will be the ones who solve them. You will solve them when you change yourselves. Well, anyway, that's it. I'm rambling. Greetings. See you tomorrow, everyone. have a problem it's about a rescue we have a problem and we don't know how to solve it let me, let me share a story with you and maybe you'll be able to help me it all started about a month ago my friend Linda sent me a picture of a, of a gargo a greyhound on the streets completely emaciated looking terrible but it was about nine o'clock and apparently that dog was uh, was trying to find some food in the garbage in a, in a garbage container the dog is a greyhound and in the south of Spain, as you know, um, hunters use greyhounds with, in a terrible way. They use them for hunting and at the end of the season they abandon, they leave them in the fields, sometimes they hang them. I mean, in Spain, Spain is notorious for, for the mistreatment of these animals. And actually many of the, many of the dogs that we rescue are galgos or podencos, which are like galgos cousins. So this dog was there trying to find some food. Uh, Linda tried to, to get him. She used a lasso, impossible. The dog was running away. And, uh, and she didn't know how to handle it. So we say, okay, let's, let's try to get him. Let's try to, to figure out a way to capture him. So we started the process of getting him used to us. So every day, every night, Linda will go to the place and would leave food next to the garbage container where she saw him for the first time. So at first, one day he didn't appear, but then the second day he arrived there and uh, there was food. Then third day, Linda goes there about uh, 10 o'clock, leaves some food and yes, the dog appears, goes eats and disappears. Pequeño, toma. So we try to build a routine for that dog. We don't know where the dog is during the day. The dog is somewhere, you know, hiding, hiding from the sun, hiding from the traffic. We don't know where he is. But every night we leave some food and he goes there and eats. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Great. The goal is to build a routine for him so that a few days down the line we can use an electronic trap, a cage, like actually it's a big device with cameras and everything. And we put food inside. And once he's inside, we click a button and we capture him. So that's the idea. Now, let me go back and tell you why in this area there are so many dogs in these conditions. Hunters use these dogs for hunting, but every year at the end of the season, they discard them. That's the usual procedure. So there are tens of thousands of dogs living on the roads and dying on the roads. I mean, cars run over them. Some of them get just die of starvation in the in the fields. I mean, it's a big tragedy. Usually, these dogs, I mean, 
quite a few of them are rescued and then they are adopted in the north of the country and sometimes we even manage to get them to other countries, to Germany, to France, to the United States. But the source of all this suffering, the mistreatment of all these animals, takes place in the south and in the center of the country, at the hands of hunters. So it's been three weeks and we have managed to figure out a routine for the dog. Every day, Linda goes there in the night to try to, to, try to, to gain his trust. But, you know, no, the dog, whenever he sees her, he runs away. But every day she puts food, and every day, and every day. So finally, when we have figured out a routine for the dog, we appear there with a big cage, with the electronic uh, device, and we place it there. And it's there, and everything is ready. We have hired a guy that is a specialist in this kind of rescues, uh, in brackets, a, a trapper, okay? He doesn't do trapping, what, what he does is he rescues dogs. I mean, the whole thing is really set up and ready to go. We have placed the whole thing, the food is there, and then the dog appears, and as the dog is getting inside the cage, look what happened. Look at this guy. This guy appears out of nowhere, and it turns out that this guy is the owner of the dog. Wow! Imagine, imagine Linda's reaction. She goes so pissed off. Who are you? What is this? I mean, just look at this guy's face. He appears semi-naked, out of nowhere, and says that this is his dog. It's just that he lets the dog free in the night to go out roaming and, you know, find his way, whatever. And, uh, but that is his dog. We try to talk to him. We try to negotiate the dog's release. We try to negotiate buying the dog. But uh, no way. The, the guy said, this is my dog, this is my dog, and I'm not gonna let him go. And he takes the dog home. So, we investigate a bit more. It turns out that the guy has six or seven dogs in exactly the same condition. It's just that this is the only one that lives every night to look for food elsewhere. The other ones are skinny, badly treated, mistreated, living in some kind of um, garage or parking lot that the guy has. And he doesn't want to let anyone go, any of them go. So we have a dilemma. So what do we do now with this dog and with this guy? We have two options. Well, we have several options and I honestly don't know what to do. I'm asking for your advice. We will see what we decide later. We can try to capture the dog again, but knowing that the guy, the owner lives nearby and if he catches us a second time, it's not gonna be pretty. Um, Linda is not in the mood for fighting. <laughs> then we have another option, which is place a police report and say that the Maybe those dogs don't have chips, a microchips, and the police will go there, they will see that the dogs don't have any microchip, and they will take all of them, and they will take them to the pound, and they will kill them. The other option we have is try to buy that one dog, but the guy has already said that he doesn't want to. So, so this is the dilemma that we have right now. We have a dog that clearly is in bad shape, that clearly is not happy, that clearly lives in miserable conditions. I mean, for a dog to go to the garbage container every night and look for food, I mean, no dog wants to do that if he has food at home. So we have this, uh, this situation and I honestly don't know what to do. Every option is valid, every option could take us somewhere but I don't know which one will be the most effective one in rescuing this dog. Certainly, we cannot go inside the guy's home and taking one dog out of seven. Um, we don't have the capacity to take all the dogs, seven dogs. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, what will you do? Please leave a comment below. I'm really interested because uh, because as of today, I haven't figured out what's the best way. Use the authorities 
and get all the dogs killed at the pound, obviously not. Buying that dog, obviously the guy doesn't want to sell and we don't go around buying dogs normally. Try to rescue the dog, capturing him, but the guy's gonna see it and uh, we're gonna have a fight over that. Three options. What will you do? Be creative. Give me some ideas. Really, I'm stuck at the moment. Guys, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for your support. Thanks for enabling us to do this. It's because of your help that, uh, that we are able to dedicate our lives to animal rescue. Without you, we just couldn't do it. So please, if you can, donate. Help me continue saving lives like this uh, beautiful baby. Hi, last month we told you the story of this rescue that we were trying to conduct. It was a, it was a white dog that was appearing in the middle of the night, every night, looking for food in the garbage. The dog was emaciated and clearly hungry. So we tried to catch him using the, the typical technique, a lasso, getting closer to him, but he, the, it was a hair actually, a female. But she would run away. Um, there was no way, there was nothing we could do. So we decided to build trust with the dog and leave her food every night until she got used to you know, having food there every night. And we created a certain routine and finally we set up a cage controlled by, by remote control, where the dog will go inside the cage, eat, we will close it, and we will capture her. And everything was ready. Until suddenly, out of nowhere, there was this massive guy, half naked, completely drunk, that appears and says that, hey, this dog is mine. What do you mean this dog is yours? Yeah, 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 I let her free, I let her roam, and you know, whenever she wants to eat something from the garbage, then she goes. And clearly, that was the only food she was getting. We were so frustrated. After days and days of trying to catch her, this guy appears and says, no, you can't rescue, she's mine. We tried to reason with the guy. We tried to buy her, but there was really nothing we could do. The guy was stubborn and it was a matter of pride for him. Obviously, he didn't care about the dog, but he wouldn't give her to us. So, okay. Plan B, we decided to wait a few days and then start again. And this is what happened. Sacamos la calle y el frío. ¿Vale? Qué bueno, ¿eh? No, yo le corto eso del cuello cuando esté en casa y tranquila. Correa, sí.
Ahí. Muy bien. Muy bien, perro. Ahora, pastor. Vamos, vamos, arriba, arriba. Ahí. Muy bien. Ahí, mi niña. Es preciosa, ¿eh? Muy bonita. Es una maravilla. Sí, es súper bonita, ¿eh? Muy bonita. Ya ha hecho. Uf. So, what did we do differently? We basically waited until the guy calmed down, you know, and then little by little, we started moving the food source every night to a different street. So the dog, instead of going to the same location, close to where she was living, then she started going to the other street away from there, and we finally got her. So, she's now with us. This is the arrival of the dog. Actually, we call her Macarena. Don't forget the name. To our clinic yesterday morning. She was being kept tight with this and in time this was going to cut into her flesh and cut her neck. Basura y vidrio comiendo basura. Llevaba Linda viéndola un tiempo. Hemos tenido que hacernos acostumbrar que se acostumbre a una rutina. Hemos puesto comida. Bueno, pues si no come que me lo digan porque seguramente le ha faltado un ansiolítico todos los primeros días. Luego ya hay perros que se adaptan muy rápido y hay perros que no tanto. Está cerrada. Está cerrada, sí. llamado? Eh, Macarena. ¿Maca? A ver, mi amor. ¿Cuánto pesa? 19. ¿Te has quitado el peso del...? Sí. Sí. Macarena 22 y ya Muy bien. Macarena is now with us. She's just one year old and she's been very lucky. They couldn't use her for breathing. So next step, we will neuter her. We're just waiting for the results, for the blood test, and hopefully everything is gonna be okay. She's looking for a home. I need to find a very special family that adopts her and gives her the quality of life that she never had before. So Macarena's rescue. Please, if you can, donate. Help me continue saving lives like her. Help me take care of Macarena until we find her a home. Take care of all the other dogs that we have at our rescue center. We need you to come on board. Without you, stories like this just simply wouldn't be possible. Please donate. Help me continue saving lives. In our last video, we showed you the rescue of Macarena, a dog that we spent weeks trying to get. It was really complicated, and just when we were about to get her, 
this guy appear out of nowhere. Turned out to be the owner. The guy is a serious jerk, really unbelievable. He wasn't giving her any food. She was being forced to eat in the garbage. And we realized why he didn't want to give her to us. Because we plead, we tried to buy her. We tried to convince him. No, no, he wouldn't. You know why? He was planning to, to breed her. He was planning to make puppies. The poor baby is barely one year old. I don't even know if she's had her first period. So, you know, the guy had uh, plans for that dog. Anyway, she's now with us. We took her to the clinic. We did some tests. We are awaiting results. She seems to be okay though. And after that, we took her to the great house. This is the moment she arrived to that beautiful place. What a change. Sacamos. Open the door. Open the door. Sí, no sé si que saquemos a mis perras a ver cómo reacciona. Saca las a las tres, pues a ver la trufa, o sea, la Naya va a venir a olerla. Que es que estos perros lo mejor es ignorarlo y que poco a poco ellos. ¡Hala! Oh, madre, otro lapicillo. Venga, chucha de la mamá, hola oh, trufa. Hola, Hay una nena. Ay, mi galga. Venga, la ven. No pasa. Venía porque la ha visto a ella. Pero ves si la mía sigue siendo desconfiada. Ven, eh, vamos, vamos a ver a la niña. <risa> Le cuesta más grabar a mi galga que a la nueva. <risa> Good morning. We're heading to the great house to see how Macarena is doing. We've been receiving videos. She's been having a lot of fun. Best friends with Coco. So we're gonna see how she's doing. On the way, we're gonna get some food for the doggies. And when we get there, we're gonna give Macarena a bath because she was a bit stinking. So poor baby. I mean, I'm sure she never had a bath in her entire life. So, yeah, just an update on Macarena. Let's see how she's doing. Food for the doggies. Comida para los perrillos. Maribel, buenos días. Eduardo, patatuelo. She probably feels that that I'm going to hit her. Poor baby. Está paralizada de miedo la pobrecita. Muy bien, muy bien. Muy bien, muy bien. These dogs are so mistreated. They are so mistreated. It's unbelievable. It's gonna take months until, until I can get close to her. And wow. Madre mía, cómo está Coco, qué guapo. No pasa nada, Maca. Voy a flipar para cogerla. Two hours later. Uh. 
Muy bien, muy bien. de bonita. Mm. <risa> Casi te pillo. Eso sí puede decir que es acoso, ¿verdad? ¿Eh? Tiene miedo, pero la boca la abre siempre. <risa> Macarena is doing great. She's at the great house. She has made best friends with Coco. Both of them are really inseparable. And I think she's, uh, she's been really, really lucky. She's still very scared though. So it's gonna take a while until you know, she gets used to the rhythm of things and until she can go to a home. In the meantime, we're looking uh, for, a beautiful, for a beautiful home for her. We're talking to several families and fingers crossed, I hope she's going to have a wonderful place very soon. So, guys, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for making this beautiful rescue possible. Hi. Two weeks ago, we rescued a dog in terrible conditions. The dog was completely emaciated. We had been seeing her looking for food in the garbage for weeks. After a couple of uh, attempts to rescue her and the intervention of the guy that said to, that came out to us saying that it was her owner, anyway, finally, the dog was rescued. We call her Macarena. We brought Macarena to our clinic here in Valencia and, you know, we started looking at her health and she turned out to be in quite a good health condition, to be honest. I was so surprised. These dogs are so incredibly strong. They survive just by whatever they can find. Unbelievable. Anyway, her biggest problem was not her health. Her biggest problem is that she was terrified of us. Terrified. And that is what we have been working on since she arrived to us. She probably feels that, that I'm going to hit her. Poor baby. Está paralizada de miedo, la pobrecita.
It's been now two weeks since she's been with us. And Maribel tells us that she's making good progress. So today we're going to go see her and I'm going to try to get close to her and see if I can, if I can gain her trust. It's a challenge. Let's see how it goes. Luna, Victoria. <coughs> 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 Hello. ¿Qué tal, chicos? ¿Cómo estás? Bien. My brother is preparing a room for a new guest, a dog that you will meet next week. Let's see, let's see how he's doing. Gordita. Tranquila, Marta. Poquito. Conmigo, por ejemplo, o sea, cuando ya está conmigo, no se pone tan así. Ahora la entráis nuevos, pero da igual, porque el que se la lleve la va a sacar a pasear y va a estar en estas situaciones. Es que estos perros hay que tener mucho cuidado. Es que se pincha cuando llega aquí. Está todo lleno de se esto. Se pincha, ¿no? Ya. Todo el suelo es esto. ¿Qué dices? Todo lleno, como ese carral. So we have an issue with, uh, with her character. She's very scared. She had made friends with Maribel and with Coco, but, um, but she's basically terrified. So right now we have to be very careful in how we process her adoption because she's definitely not ready. Imagine she gets adopted by someone and then the moment she gets to the house, she, she will just try to, to escape and run away. And so we have to, little by little, get her used to us and get her used to people and interact to, with people in a different way that she has been interacting until now, which has been basically escaping and trying to cover up, you know. They used to hit her, and she's terrified of people, basically. Muy bien, Coquito. Si tú quieres, siéntate. Sí, muy bien. Tú sabes ya que lo suyo le costó a Laura. Lo suyo le costó a la tía Laura. Toma, queda uno, Maca. Madre mía. Haces cualquier ruidito. Wow. You have to be very careful. The slightest noise, she runs away. Cuando tienen tanto miedo, siempre es mucho mejor sentado claro. que de pie. ¿Qué capón tienes, tío? Ya le iba a decir Coco a ella. Toma. Coco, ¿ves? Es que solo va él. Maca. This, in a way, is like feeding birds in a park. We have to, sí. little by little, get her trust and she'll get closer. But, uh, wow. Bueno, mira, 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 mira. Sí. Digo, no puedo hablarle a Coco porque entonces la asusto a ella. Ahora Iván se va a sentar ahí con vosotros. Siéntate ahí con ellos. Sí, así, así se te acercará, ves si estás aquí. Yo me tenía mucho miedo también, pero de pie no. Ay. Muy bien, Macarena. Ya está, mira. Muy bien. Muy bien, Maca. Coco. Eh, la cosa va a coger la grande, sí, hombre. La grande. La pequeña no la quiere, va por la grande. Es un bebé que no soy total, eh. Tienen esta ventana perfecta para el sol, eh. Se pegan unas siestas aquí colgando desde el sol. Coco, estás enfadado. <risa> ¿Eh? ¿Os imaginas que además me dejan esto caerse? ¿Normal? Uy, ah, oh, Iván, ¿eso ha sido tú? Sí, ven aquí. ¿Eso ha sido tu cabulo? 
Toma, que estas son de otro sabor, Iván. Uy, estas son de jamón. Lo único, o sea, lo que se necesita es, es gente con experiencia de sí. perros con miedo, ¿no? Porque luego este tipo de perros como ella, cuando tú los tienes dentro en tu casa contigo, a ellos no les cuesta tanto hacerse a ti. Claro. Pero tienes que saber cómo manejarla. Cuando sales a la calle, cuando la paseas, de los collares que sean los que no se salen, porque el peligro es que se te escape fuera, porque luego ya tienen miedo y no los coges. Claro. ¡Ey! Mm, ¡Qué malo eres! Pues porque están, estáis vosotros, si no, ella se lo explica. So finally, Macarena was eating from my hand. Would I be able to say that she trusts me? No, she doesn't trust me yet. And it's gonna take a while, but I think eventually we'll get there. You see a dog that has been mistreated and that has been living in such conditions from the time when she was a puppy. It's gonna take a long time. It will be a very difficult, it's gonna be a challenge. But I think eventually, eventually, we will, we will gain her trust. We're definitely working on it. Maribel is doing an amazing job, as she always does, and Macarena looks already so much better. Anyway, let's see how it goes. So guys, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for being part of the rescue of Macarena. Thank you for, for allowing us to continue saving lives. We're getting closer to Christmas. Just next week will be our last days before the end of the year. Guys, I really need to ask for your help. Please, everything you see here is only possible if we have your support. And Macarena's Rescue and all the other animals, they, they're only here because of your help. So I need to ask for your support. Please donate, donate, join as a subscriptor in this amazing rescue group. I need your help to continue saving lives. Thank you. It's been a pretty intense night. We are waiting to hear from news from, from Noah at the hospital. We left her at the hospital after being operated in a life or death situation. It was all of a sudden, without any warning, there was what is called a gastric dilation. Her stomach had filled with gas and had swollen and it was threatening to, to turn around. So we had to operate really quickly uh, and as I say, it was a, a matter of life or death. So we're waiting to hear from news from the hospital to see how she spent the night. In the meantime, we're coming to the great house, to our, to our shelter, to, to collect Macarena and take her to be neutered. Macarena is this gago that we rescued uh, a month and a half ago. She was, uh, she was living on the streets. She was trying to find food, garbage, any way she could and she's now with us. We're still looking for a home for her. It's a very special dog. She was very afraid of people, so we are working on building her trust on people, on humans, and, uh, and making her better. So today, while we wait for news from, from Noah, we're gonna take her to be neutered. Frantic day, I have to say. And uh, I'm very worried about Noah. Let's see how it goes. This is the Great House, our rescue center. And this is where Macarena and everyone else is staying. <laughs> when, when she saw me, she was like, oh my God, something bad is gonna happen. So we're gonna, we're gonna let them uh, run around for a few minutes and then we'll take her to the hospital to be, to be neutered. Te pego unas carreras. Sí. Madre mía. Aquel ni en 100 años la coge. La lleva 10 metros por delante por lo menos. Él intenta correr, pero no puede. No puede como ella. Ha cogido peso, ¿eh? Hombre, come bien, ¿eh? Vamos, Maca. La correa está ahí en la... Voy a hacer una vuelta a la cocina para poder ponerse aquí. 
No te pierdas los ojos de Coco. Está. Coco tiene. Coco is so worried that we're taking Macarena away. He's terrified. Look at this. Look at this. Mira, no te pegue un porrazo. Coco, pobre Coco. Madre mía, su amiga. Mira, mira. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, qué mayor. ¿Lo Sí, hombre. No, porque además la va a alterar mucho. La altera. Hombre, la activa. La va a poner a 300. Vale, y vale. menudo viaje me pueden dar. Vale, vale, Coco. Pues no la líes. Míralo, venga. Esto va a ser rápido, cariño. Quieta. is that if she came out and she ran away it would be impossible to catch her ever so we have to be really really careful ¿Lo pones a cero? Sí, está. ¡Uy! Ha querido pesar. Maca, te quieren poner de más. ¿Está? Sí, 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 lo más o menos. ¿Cuánto ha cogido? Un kilo. Sí, y no va a coger más, ¿eh? Sí, sí, me 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 la la Tuve dos años para mordarle dos kilos. Sí. Comiendo sí. todo, sí. absolutamente lo que quería. ¿Qué, bombón? Ay, mi niña madre. Voy a ir quitando este, que tú te sientas más cómoda. Ay, mi amor. Morena. Ahora con eso te relajas enseguida, cariño. Muy bien. Ay, niña, ¿por qué tan nena? Seguimos vivas. Mira cómo gira el ojo para mirar la cama. ¿Qué pasa, mi niña bonita? Chico, ya más chulo, ¿eh? No, que sí, me encanta. Ah, mogollón. Ahí de gato, Seguro que lo eligió color, Linda. ¿eh? Es chulísimo. ¿Eh? Eso fue la tía Linda que te lo mandó ya el collar. La calle te está durmiendo. Se le va sí, corriendo. Sí. Se le va corriendo la pata. <risa>
pelo debería estar cerquita porque está como muy sangrante, que normalmente no está tan así. Cuanto más próximo del celo, más sangra. Eh, siempre es mejor cogerlo, pues cuanto más alejado, mejor, porque siempre si sangra menos, mejor. Justo a tiempo, ¿no? Se está despertando ahora. A ver, aún está casi a uno, ¿eh? De ser confronado, pero la tía... La tía es peleona. Uy, uy, uy. So that was it, Macarena's uh, neutering. It's amazing the amount of people that still don't understand why animal rescues will always neuter their animals. Um, two reasons, basically. Health and population control. It makes no sense to rescue an animal and then send him to a family and then have him deliver or have, have her deliver uh, puppies uh, shortly afterwards. It just doesn't make any sense. Sometimes I, I just don't explain these things because I've been doing this for so long, but I understand that it is still necessary to hammer the concept and, and just try to convince people that this is the right thing to do. Still too many pets are being abandoned too many puppies in unwanted litters and you know this is why she was knitted today anyway guys thank you very much for being here thanks for your support macarena is waiting for a home i still have to talk to some people misha out there i have a few friends that are interested in in her and uh, and i need to talk to them before taking a final decision Sacamos la calle y el frío. 
¿Vale? Hi. I'm going to tell you a story. And if this works out, at the end of the video, we will have found a beautiful home for an amazing dog. It all started a few, few months ago, five months ago, six months ago, when our team in Seville, in the south of the country, started seeing a dog rummaging, going at night, trying to find food in the garbage containers. Initially, we tried to catch her and she ran away. But we noticed that she was going back to the same containers every single night. So we set, up a, we set up a trap for her. It was a beautiful dog, emaciated, clearly neglected. And she was just trying to find food anywhere, really. And what better place than in the garbage container? So we set up a trap and we waited and we waited. And just as the dog arrived and she was getting inside the trap, this guy appeared out of nowhere and told us that that was her dog, that was his dog, and get away from here. And actually, he tried to steal the trap. So we thought, okay, wow, what an owner, wonderful guy. We're gonna have to change the strategy. So we took some time. We kept an eye on the dog. The dog was going back every night to the garbage container. And we just, we just set up a, like a little trail of food every night to try to get her away from that garbage container. And we set up the trap elsewhere. And that's what happened. Finally, finally, we managed to rescue, to rescue her. Now, obviously, she didn't have a microchip. She didn't have anything that proof that that guy was actually the owner. So, you know, possession is nine tenths of the law, right? So she came with us. When she arrived here to Valencia and uh, we put her in our beautiful home, our rescue center, the great house, she was terrified, really. This dog had been mistreated, beaten. I mean, really, she wasn't only emaciated. She was truly terrified of people. But you could see that she really wanted, she really wanted to have a contact. And we thought, okay, so slowly, slowly, before putting her for adoption, we have been working on getting her used to the team, getting her used to the other dogs at the great house. She made great friends with some of them, with Coco, for example. And little by little, we started approaching her and we started getting used, we started her getting used to human presence and human kindness. This is a very special dog. It's a galgo. It's a purebred galgo. And to those of you that know the breed, you know this is one of the most special, loving, interesting dogs that is. Galgos are among the fastest dogs in the world. Greyhounds, to call them. They can run super, super fast. Explosive power. In this country, they are used for sight hunting and for racing. And then after that, they get discarded and abandoned. But deep inside, these dogs have a very rich emotional life. They're very sensitive. They're pack animals. They get along with every other dog. They're unbelievable. They really get along with everybody. This is a dog that has pure, raw, explosive power. She can run really fast for brief periods of time but then comes down and she's a very, very easy dog to live with. These are perfect dogs for a home, for an apartment. They don't need big space. What they need is to be taken out for walks, controlled. You cannot let them free and supervised or in a park or anything. I mean, it has to be an enclosed environment because especially her at the moment, she might run away. In time, when she gets used to you, uh, things can relax a little bit with a longer leash, maybe longer walks in the forest, if you have one, or in the fields. What I'm trying to say is that this is a dog that has been mistreated, that is somewhat reserved, 
but that she's very loving. And that once she bonds with you, <laughs> you're up for a treat. This is an incredible dog, truly unbelievable. So she's not emaciated anymore. She has put on muscle. And uh, today we took her out for a walk and I wanna show you how she walks and how, you know, how she interacts with the streets, how she interacts with the neighborhood. Bear in mind that over here we have a holiday and people are throwing fireworks. So, you know, it could be a bit uh, unsettling for her, but have a look at this because she has made a lot of progress. This is Macarena. Macarena, what do you think of the name? Huh? She's looking for a beautiful home. Have a look at this. Madre mía, qué vendaval. Vamos a volar, Alex, ¿lo ves? <laughs> Vamos con mi coche, ¿no? Sí. Vale. Su segundo paseo, ¿no? Ya el otro día ya... El otro día probamos, muy bien, incluso con petardos y con manda de música. Y todo bien. Y genial. Ahí está súper chiquitina. Es muy chiquitina. ¿De qué? Muy chiquitina. Vamos a ver, a enseñarte que no pasa nada, ¿vale, Macarena? Qué cariño, que vaya sola. ¿Vale, mi amor? Aparte, el aire. No puede ser. El viento no ayuda. Ya, vamos a ver, ¿qué tal? Vamos a buscar una zona que hayan perros. Me suena un tipicán, que creo que vamos a ir allí. Y Maca, como le encantan los perros, le va a ir súper bien. Aparte que hoy viene de paseo sola, que sí. siempre ha estado acompañadita de, de Coco. Está especialmente asustada, ¿no? Está un poquito más asustada de lo que yo esperaba. Es un descampado, mi amor. Ven aquí, mi vida. Chiquitina mía. Maki. Sí, quitando de la parte de arriba, mi chica sale. Mira, tenemos campo. Bonita. Tita. Ah, oh, no, que Ay, mira. Mira. Así. Y de hecho, se apoya mucho en los perros. La seguridad de un perro a ella le ayuda un montón. Mira, ¿quién sabe que está en terreno seguro? Mi chica. Hola, amor. Aquí sí, ¿eh? Y me ve, me ve y se va. Mira que tengo. ¿Qué ves? Muy bien. 
Es que te ves los pelos y sale corriendo. Mira. Si no pasa, no está que me la cámara. No le gusta ser famosa a Macarena. Pues lo eres, Maca. Macarena is looking for a home. It has to be someone that has at least another dog. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female, she gets along with everybody. We haven't tested her with cats. It might be risky. Don't forget that these dogs are you know, used for hunting small prey. But um, if you have a dog or two or three, she's gonna be very easy and she's gonna be a great addition to your family. You just have to be very careful when you, when you walk her She has to be under control at all times. At the beginning, with a double security leash, because she might run away. But this won't be for long, I promise you. Anyway, guys, that was Macarena's story. She's looking for a home. My email address is here. Write to me. Tell me everything about you, your animals. Show me pictures. I need to see how your animals live, okay? Let's find a beautiful home for this dog. If you cannot adopt her, or she's not a dog for you, at least share this video. I need to spread the word to as many people as possible, okay? And please don't forget that all of this can only happen if you have your support. Macarena was rescued and she has, she's been living with us uh, all this time because of your help. Get involved, please. You're watching these videos, you, you love us, you leave us comments. I need you to come on board. Please donate, help me continue saving lives. Ahora este se va. Ahora se va el otro también. Bueno, ¿y tú qué? Cuando queráis, ya me avisáis. Vale, chao. ¿Vienes o no? Va, pasa, va. Chicos, os voy a dejar la puerta abierta esta noche. Podéis entrar cuando queráis, ¿vale? Bueno, vosotros y los ladrones. Maca, Maca. Ven aquí. Sí, hombre, sí. Ven aquí. Maca, ven aquí. ¿Qué tal? ¿Eh? Un poquito para acá. Bueno, pues ya os tengo aquí a los dos. Hemos triunfado. Vuestra primera noche aquí, en casa. ¿Qué? ¿Cómo lo veis? Buenas noches, ¿vale? Ven, Maca, ven. Ven, ven aquí, no me tengas miedo. No me tengas miedo, que no tienes que tener miedo. ¿Eh? Vale. Ya está, si somos todos aquí, todos somos ami amigos y familia. ¿Vale? ¿Eh? ¿Ves? Mira cómo se deja tocar, fíjate. Madre mía, te he caído bien, ¿eh? Te he caído bien. Y yo que pensaba que no te tocaría nunca. Mira cómo cambian las cosas. Venga, vale, a dormir. Bye, bye, bye. Ya no me tienes miedo, ¿eh? Qué fuerte. Me ha venido a nosotros. Fuera, nano, fuera, va, largo de aquí, venga, va, todos fuera, buenos días, va, a la calle todos, va, todos fuera, venga, buenos días, vamos, 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 adiós, adiós, venga, es una buena mañana, deja la mía dormir un ratillo más. Dos horas después. Hola chicos. Bueno, ¿qué? Yo creo que queréis comer, ¿no? Es lo que queréis. ¿Eh? ¿Qué tal? 
¿Y por qué estáis todos aquí? Mía, cálmate, que los estás excitando a todos. ¿Pero por qué me seguís? ¿Qué os pensáis? ¿Que vais a comer ahora? Pero... Pero... Ahora me voy para allá. Ahora me voy para allá. Váyatela. ¿Cómo estás tú? Te veo muy bien, ¿eh? Te veo aquí... Muy a gusto, ¿eh? ¿A que sí? ¡Ay! ¡Ay, Dios mío! Ay. Bueno, os quedáis ahí y descansad, que luego vengo con los peques. Y esos os van a dar caña. Ya lo sabes, Macarena. A jugar, madre mía. Pensaba que no te gustaban los hombres. La que me descuido, mira, te puedo meter el dedo en la oreja, mira. El dedo en la oreja, así. Así, el dedo en la oreja. Muy bien, Oscar. Se deja que te huela en la mano. ¿Ves? Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a darle un poquito de salchichas. Muy bien. Suave. Muy bien. ¿Preparamos más salchichas? Sí. Vale, muy bien. Quédate tú con ella, Ginebra. Anda, Macarena, tus primeros niños. No, dásela así. Muy bien. Perfecto. Genial. ¿Es otra? Claro. Cuida. Muy bien. Súper bien. Mira, ¿ves? Muy bien. Muy bien, Oscar. Tienes una mano. Venga, a ver. ¿Ves? Ya no te tiene miedo. Ya te está perdiendo el miedo. Lo has hecho muy bien. Súper bien. Muy bien. Muy bien, Macarena. Muy bien, Macarena. Muy bien. Y muy bien a ti, Oscar. Súper bien. ¿En serio? ¿Así está la cosa entre vosotros dos? Madre mía. ¿Qué hacemos contigo, Nano? Mira qué postura. Mira, míralo, míralo. Si no cabes ya. Si es, yo no ni me fite. Ay, nano, nano. Nano. Buenas noches, sale. Míralo. <laughs> so that's it it's time to find a final home for coco and before anything please don't ask me to keep him i'm not gonna keep this guy okay he needs to have he needs to have a family of his own i cannot have i cannot keep every dog i rescue so coco needs an amazing home he really is great see when you see him at the great house you see him running so playful and everything And he is great. He really is all of that. But also, he's beautiful, calm, soft, beautiful with kids. He's an amazing dog. He really is unbelievable. So let's find him home, okay? Send me an email. My email address is v.larkill at gmail.com. Tell me everything about you and your animals. And let's find a home for this guy. He really is He's really is great. It's so super sweet, super sweet, Coco. Let's find him at home, please. He needs to go home, please. He needs to go home. And as I always say, don't forget that everything we do can only happen thanks to your support. Hi guys, how are you? Okay, now imagine my surprise when I come to my living room and I find this. Look at this. Look at this dog. Look at this. This is Macarena. Now, many of you will remember her because she was rescued about a year and a half ago and she was living at the great house. And she was very shy. She wouldn't let me get any close to her. I could never touch her. I mean, in all the time that she stayed at the great house, I could never get close to her. Whenever she would see me, she would just run away, terrified. But look at this. This is what I brought her here 10 days ago. 
because I wanted her to be socialized with me and my family. I wanted her to, to stop being afraid and I wanted to be able to find her a great home. Now, I know that many of you have never seen a dog like this. You have never been close to a dog like this because this is very special. Today I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, well, I mean, I'm gonna show you some images of Macarena being cute and a princess, but I'm also gonna tell you some things about these dogs, about Gargos, greyhounds, that maybe you didn't know. Now, Gargos are the fastest dogs in the world. These guys run like the wind. It's incredible, 60 to 69 kilometers an hour. That's 37 to 43 miles an hour. Now, just imagine this guy, this girl is designed for a speed. She has very long limbs, very light, super thin, no fat at all. And then she has these amazing muscles. I mean, I wish you could touch this. This is pure, pure muscle. It's, she's unbelievable, really unbelievable. There's also something very special about the way they run. They run so fast and so elegantly that they spend 75% of the time on the air. They just touch the floor with these with this long legs and they literally fly. They are incredible. Now, Galgos also have really, really high blood cells in their blood. And this is because they need a lot of oxygen to feed these muscles to run faster and to be the wonderful dogs that they are. Now, something else about Galgos. You know, until now, whenever I shot a video of her, she was terrified. She was running away from me. She was really, but it turns out that when she's relaxed, she has this. She has this very, very long tail that they use to stabilize when they run. And they use it as a, some kind of rudder, you know, like a stabilization tool. Look at this. Look at this. They're unbelievable. You know that galgos or greyhounds can see anything up to 800 meters. I mean, if there is a mouse or, or a rabbit or something running out there, 800 meters. These eyes are incredibly powerful. They are not only powerful, they are also <laughs> positioned in such a way that she can see what's happening here, 270 degrees. It's like close to 360. So she can effectively see something that is happening behind. So it's incredible to catch them by surprise. It's really difficult. I mean, they just know they are super alert and they know what's going on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ay, Macarena. Would you believe that she never let me touch her? And, and look at her now. Look at her now. People also think that these dogs are very high energy. They look at them, they're designed for a speed, and they think, you know, this dog, I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need a big house with a massive yard for this dog to run. <laughs> no idea. This dog sleeps all day, 18 hours a day. It's like a sleeping machine. I mean, really is so difficult to catch her awake. But when you see her awake, oh my God, the way she runs and the way she plays with her friends, she is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Galgos, greyhounds are also super healthy. Actually, they say that they're, they're immune to some conditions like leishmaniasis. I've never seen a galgo or a podenko, their cousins that has leishmaniasis. These guys just don't get sick. So they're super resistant. And that's actually how they survive the shitty lives that their previous owners give them. Because these dogs are terribly abused. 
terribly abused. Geraldine, where are the other dogs? They are out, they are out playing, and Rocky is somewhere, somewhere in the house. Anyway, this video is about Macarena. So, amazing, amazing dog. They have a type of blood that is the universal donor. They can donate to, to any other dog. Also, they are not only amazing runners, they can run super fast, as I say, 43 miles an hour. They can also jump, and they can jump. I've seen Gagos jump like shoo, vertical takeoff. Shoo. They jump like helicopters. Unbelievable. Ah, Kirsten. Well, sometimes if they get it, they negativize. They, they, they negativize it really, really quickly. But I'm glad. I'm glad that she's fine. So, Macarena. A dog that right until just a few days ago, I could never touch. And look at her now. She is amazing. She is so soft, so polite. She's amazing with kids. Super social, gets along with every dog in my house, with every dog. And I tell you, a delight to have. A delight to have. So I just gave you some info because I really want Macarena to find a home. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I brought her and Coco here because I wanted her to get used to me, to be able to interact like that instead of, be, instead of running around scared all day. I wanted her to relax. Yeah, here, yeah, a little bit of sausage. She's crazy about it. Sausages and treats. She's really wonderful. Really. So delicate. Wow. You have the others. Put that, put the, and they will just chew your finger. This one is so delicate. Huh, Macarena? Okay. Amazing dog. So the purpose of this video today is to find a home for this beautiful, beautiful animal. Vamos a encontrar una casa. We're going to find a home for you. She deserves it. We rescued her from a shitty condition in the south, in Seville. She had a horrible owner and she was being forced to eat garbage on the streets. She was never fed at home. So she had to go out and find food by the garbage containers. And look at her now. She doesn't have to work. She doesn't have to hunt for anybody. And she is a sofa machine. She loves to sleep. Please, guys, let's find her a home. Seriously. I cannot keep every dog. I know there's always going to be... There's one of you are going to say, wow, keep her. Just another dog. Keep her. She's so happy with you. Yeah, but no, I'm an animal rescuer. Don't forget, I rescue animals and I find them homes. I don't have a dog collection here. These guys are, they need to have their own homes. But look at the change. Look at the change. Oh, she's beautiful. Now, these days over here, we have a, we have a holiday, Fallas it's called, and there are a lot of fireworks. And she hates fireworks. You know why? Because they remind her of what they did to her when she was out there. She was forced to hunt. She was forced to go after prey. And I mean, really, she must have lived in horrible conditions. These, these dogs never live well. They never have proper lives until the moment they are rescued. Ay, baby. So, just have a look at her. Yes, yes, Rosaline, I agree. Most dogs, not, not all dogs, but most dogs hate fireworks. But when a dog has been used for hunting, they hate it even more. Especially after they left the conditions in which they live. I mean, a firework brings a memory of a shitty life. You have no idea 
how these dogs live. They live in packs of 20, 30, living in holes in the wall. They're called thulos here. And a thulo is literally a hole in the wall or a container or somewhere where they put them like if they were merchandise or something. I mean, I've seen these places with 30, 40 dogs stuck in a container with no ventilation and all dying in the middle of the summer, dying of heat. I mean, it's not uncommon to find dogs, 40 dogs, 50 dogs in one of these containers and boiling to death in the summer because people just forget about them. They leave them there. Anyway, this is Macarena. She needs, a, she needs a home. And I promise you, if you adopt her, she's going to make you happy. You're going to be proud of what you did. Because I mean, her life was very, very miserable. And you're going to change everything for her. So, what does she need? She needs a home with another dog. She's very social. She needs the company of another dog. If she lived alone in a home with a human, she wouldn't be happy. She needs another animal. So write to me. Tell me everything about you and your family and your dogs. I need to have another dog. My email address is, uh, is everywhere on every one of my videos. This is a very special dog, really. Unbelievable. And she gets along with everybody, including Rocky. Huh? <laughs> Rocky chases her tail. Oh, God. Okay. <sighs> yeah, so these, uh, these live videos are, are just uh, improvised, but, uh, but they really serve a purpose. I really, want this, I really want this dog to find an amazing home. She's really regal. Ah, by the way, these dogs used to be reserved in the old times. They were reserved for nobility, for aristocracy, for royalty. And now they are the most mistreated and abused dogs there are. They use them for race. They use them for races. After they are not in tip-top condition, they kill them. I mean, I remember a few years ago in the UK. There was a big scandal because somebody had been killing thousands of these dogs that were used to race. Over here in Spain, they're used for hunting. At the end of the season, they're all discarded, sent, I mean, abandoned in the highway, in the roads, in the fields. They hunt them from trees. I mean, they tie them to walls with short chains. And I've seen, I've seen everything, really. And they're amazing. I mean, you have to be a coward, a really despicable human being to mistreat one of these dogs because they really cannot and will not defend themselves. I mean, Macarena is never going to do anything against any human being, no matter how much you hit her, mistreat her, nothing. She will just not defend herself. Vic, if Victor can do anything, I'd like to see him put his leg between. <laughs> so what, 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 what? Somebody has just asked me what? What do you want me to do? Hold on. <laughs> if Victor can do anything, I'd like to see him put his leg behind his neck. I don't understand. <laughs> put my leg behind. Ah, yeah, right. My leg behind my neck. Yeah, it's not going to happen, Kirsten. <laughs> I can't do that. Anyway, look at this. Amazing dog. Please, let's find her a home. Okay? I cannot keep her. She's a rescue. I need to find her an amazing home. By the way, questions. Alma, uh, yeah, I'm not so flexible. Alma is doing amazing. We'll have an update on her very soon. I keep on, her family sends me videos and she's looking really beautiful. There will be an update on her soon. And uh, they're all okay. And Rocky is out there playing with the others. 
Rocky has to go to the hairdressers this week. He's, he looks like a mess. He's having a bad hair day. Uh, let's find her at home. Come on. Look at her. Look at her. By the way, there's going to be some emojis with her face on our channel member program. So if you can, consider joining us on that and you will see this beautiful face in your collection. She's amazing. She's really great. Ah, Lillian, Macarena's favorite food so far, chicken and beef, red meat. She loves it. She eats about half a chicken a day, sometimes a bit more, and because she burns a lot of energy. And she's, that's why she's so thin, because she burns a lot. She has a very efficient uh, metabolic, metabolic system. And uh, so she eats half a chicken a day. So half a chicken, some beef, a quarter chicken and some beef and some other things. Yeah, it has to be raw. And she'll be happy. Very, very happy. Thank you. Thank you, The Secret Vault. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your help. Thank you. This one, every once in a while when people leave us these tips, is nice. I mean, yeah, it helps. It really does. Okay, so there she is, sleeping. She has 17 hours to go. <laughs> she sleeps all day. Then she goes, she wakes up, she goes out, does a couple of runs, chases, chases Rocky or or Mimi, and she goes back to sleep. She's best friends with Nano, best friends with Coco. Yeah. Come on, write to me. Adopt her. Put a gargo in your life. She deserves it. And you deserve it too. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Lots of love. Come on. Let's find a home for her, please. Look at that face. Dad, I hear you recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, um, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool, I like animals. How do you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey dad, nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. <laughs> it's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while.